Hi, I'm Colin Marlowe, and I'm in the computer engineering program. Hi, I'm Daniel Crane, and I'm also in the computer engineering program. So for our project, our whole idea was to make a three-axis gimbal that can be controlled with one accelerometer that you hold in your hand, and it would mimic your movements one-to-one. Uh, -one. For the gyroscope, we bought an NPU 6050, which is an accelerometer and a gyroscope all built into one that you communicate using I squared C. And so on the gyroscope, there are eight pins that you can use to communicate with it and do different functions. We ended up just using four of them. Uh, the first four on it being um, the voltage and the ground. Those two are pretty simple. And then the SCL and the SDA, which those are the two pins that you use to communicate using I squared C. Uh, the four other pins, which we didn't use, are two other uh, SDA and SCL pins, which you can use to communicate with other devices. Um, an AD0 pin, which is used to communicate using multiple gyroscopes, which we also didn't end up using, and an interrupt pin. So when we got our values for the gyroscope, our main goal in the program was to convert those values into... Uh, movements on the stepper motors and with our three axis gimbal we have three stepper motors one for the x one for the y and one for the z axis and pretty much their main goal is just to go left or right based on you know if you move left or right in each uh, respective axis All of this is functioning off of our SCM32 L476RG board, which we have connected to the back with all the wires going directly into it. Um, now, what we have here is a 3D printed housing unit for our gyroscope, which makes it easier to hold and to tilt in different directions to send commands to the microcontroller and eventually to the motors. Now, of course, the way that we communicate with the, the microcontroller, like we said before, is with I squared C. And there are actually pins dedicated on the microcontroller to I squared C, being PC8 and PC9. And so those two are hooked directly into this controller. And when we do different tilting motions with this, it will show on our gimbal. Using I squared C, there are a few different requirements for communicating with it. For one, this um, gyroscope has a specific slave address that you need to send to it to let it know that you're talking to it, which we found was hex 68. Now first, you have to send over that number, that slave address, and it'll send an acknowledge bit. Then you have to write to it the specific register that you want to read from in the gyroscope because there are over a hundred registers on this and we need to find the correct data for the gyroscope specifically. And so how we did it was after you write to the slave address and then you write the register address, you write the slave address again but saying that you want to read from it instead of writing these addresses. And then after that, it will start sending the data. And how it works is you can set how many registers you read from. And the way that the gyroscope is set up is that there is an X register, a Y res register, and a Z register. And so, without, if you don't send a stop bit, you can read data right from the registers 
in what they call burst mode, where you read the X register, Y register, and Z register and get it all back at the same time. So for our main program overview, we had to do three main things to start out with, which was first initializing the I squared C, which was uh, putting in all the timings and everything to get I squared C to communicate properly. And secondly, we had to configure the gyroscope itself through I squared C after we had set it up. And then after that, we had to initialize the three stepper motors, uh, just configure them as outputs so we could uh, communicate with them. After that, um, after we got those three initializations done, our next step was to read data from the uh, gyroscope itself. So what we would do is um, read all six registers, well there's two for each axis, X, Y, and Z. We would get all of those, um, all that data, and then we'd interpret it as a movement left or right corresponding to each axis and then in turn that would uh, turn the motor uh, a corresponding amount to however much it changed. And then with that uh, we also had what we called a threshold value. So we had this threshold value for one main reason and that was to eliminate jitter or just tiny little tiny movements that um, made our gimbal a lot shakier and just more unstable than we wanted. And this threshold value would, um, it would only change movement in the motor if it was a big movement instead of small little ones which would make it really jittery and uh, just unstable. So overall our project was able to successfully read um, inputs from our gyroscope and translate them to movements on our uh, stepper motor three axis gimbal. Um, our gyroscope has three axes that it reads from which correlates of course to the three X, Y, and Z uh, axes on the gimbal. Um, if we had more time we would probably get different motors because the the weight of the project turned out to be a little more um, of a burden on this motor than we would have liked and so if we had a different motor, then the, the movement would have been a little more smooth. But overall, uh, the motors were as responsive as we needed them to be for a successful project. So if we had more time, we would use uh, this module right here, which also has a three-axis accelerometer. We would use one of the axes to control a slider functionality, which would move this whole assembly left and right. But overall, we had a great project that reads inputs from our uh, gyroscope, all three axes of the gyroscope, and successfully translates them to movements on our three-axis gimbal.